Hi, my name is Ronit Mukherjee and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the adaptive meshing methods in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Now, in SOLIDWORKS simulation, we've got two types of adaptive methods. We've got H-adaptive and we've got P-adaptive. Now, the H-adaptive mesher farming method automatically reduces the element size in the areas of high energy no mirror, high strain energy no mirror. Um, we get a target accuracy slider bar, which defines the desired error for the solution. For example, if I have 98% uh, set over here on the slider bar, this orders the solution to stop when the strain energy no mirror in the model is less than 2% comparing with the last run. So the maximum number of loops that we can apply, that we can specify this H adaptive study to have is five. So if it's not satisfied after the first loop, it runs the second loop. If it's still not satisfied, it runs the third loop. If it's satisfied after that, then it will stop. But if it's not, then it'll carry on for the fourth and the fifth loop. So that's your H adaptive study where it uh, um, refines the mesh in critical areas or high strain energy norm areas. Um, next is our P adaptive study. And the P adaptive meshing uses a higher order polynomial equations in the regions of a high strain energy uh, errors. So the mesh doesn't change for P adaptive, but the polynomial order that increases. So when we are setting up the P adaptive study, a couple of things that we look at is stop when the total strain energy or the RMS1 Mises or the RMS resultant displacement. Any of that change, uh, we can tell SOLIDWORKS to converge when and, and, and tell the looping to stop when uh, our change is less than any desired number that we can add over there. And the way a user sets it up is we define a starting polynomial, that we define a maximum polynomial, and then we define the number of loops required, uh, required for SOLIDWORKS to run. So that's our p-adaptive, where it changes the, uh, it increases the order of polynomial equations to, to achieve accurate results. So let's jump into software and let's take a look at it. Let's see how this is uh, set up. Okay, over here, I've got a simple bracket and, um, and it's also a symmetric part. So what I can do, first of all, is go to my configurations manager and then I can activate my symmetry configuration that we have created. And it's basically chopping this model into half based on where it's symmetric. Once we have that, now we can run an analysis on this and uh, it will take less number of elements and um, increase our, uh, um, uh, uh, decrease our studying uh, the, the runtime for this particular model. So let's take a look at how we're going to set up the study for P, P adaptive and H adaptive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up three studies. I'm going to set up a standard study where we're not going to use any adaptive options. Then I'm going to do an H adaptive study and then I'm going to do a P adaptive study after that. And then we can compare the three results. And we can also look at the convergence, actually. So let's go ahead and start a new study. So I'm going to go to my simulation uh, tab, go to new study, and start a new static study. Over here, I can give it a name, and I'll call this standard. I'll hit the green check. And now I'm in my simulation environment. Over here, I like to go down the tree and kind of satisfy what uh, the uh, so, so what simulation is asking me for. So first of all, in order to see where the HP adaptive and uh, just the standard are, are used, it's right under your uh, study name. If you right click on it and you go to properties, under properties, you'll notice there's a tab for adaptive. When you click on that, here are our options. Right now it's set to none. And if I wanted to use H adaptive, I'll select that option and define my values. And if I want to do P adaptive, I'll select this option and define my values down here. In this case, we'll keep it at none and we'll click OK. Perfect. So second step, I've got my material already applied, so I don't have to worry about that. Third, it's connections. I'm not working with an assembly over here, so we can skip the connections as well. And we'll jump straight to the fixtures. So right now, I'll right click on it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this back face. So I'll just use my fixed geometry option and I'll select this back face over here. Once I select this back face and I hit the green check, I know this face is fixed. And if you hover over it, it also shows you uh, in this call out, it says fixed one, fixed geometry. Now I know that we chopped this particular model into half. So I do have to apply my symmetry restraints on this side. Again, I'll go to the fixtures. I'll go to my advanced fixtures this time, and then I can use my symmetry option right here under my advanced, uh, advanced fixtures. So I'll select my symmetry option, and all I have to do is select this face, 
and select this face and SOLIDWORKS does a nice little preview of you know the extra stuff that we are that we chopped off so it will take in consideration uh, the other half of this mo model once you select that hit the green check one of the things that we got to do is we got to apply a load so I'm going to apply about 110,000 Newton load on this face right here so I'll go to my external loads I'll right click on it I'll select the force option and I'll apply a simple force that's perpendicular to that face normal to that face and I'll give it a value of about 110,000 newtons. Now I'll hit the green check, and as soon as you do that, uh, that's basically the setup for the study. Last we've got to do is uh, create the mesh and run the study. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this, uh, create this mesh and run it as a standard. Uh, sorry, run it as a curvature based by de uh, with the default uh, mesh factor. So I'll hit the green check to this. And you notice SOLIDWORKS goes through and creates my mesh and the mesh looks nice. I mean, uh, but rule of thumb, we have more than two elements across the thickness anywhere if you look, notice. So this is a decently good mesh. We don't have to go any more accurate. But what we can do is uh, once we're done with the mesh, all you have to do, right click on the study property, uh, study name and hit run. Cool. As soon as we um, click run it, it doesn't take too long for this uh, study to run and a couple of the results that we can kind of catch right off the bat are it tells me what the yield strength for this particular metal that we're using is so ASI 304 yield strength is about 206.8 megapascals and I'm getting a maximum um, uh, high stress in uh, basically that area below the bracket and it's coming up to be about 213.998 so this part is failing if you um if you want to interpret that results uh, that result so we're about six megapascals beyond uh, what the yield strength is so now i want to show you where we can set up the h adaptive studies and how we can set these up and let's see what the solution um gives us so the first thing I'm going to do is, instead of having to set up the entire H adaptive study again, um, in order to save some time, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this study. So I'm going to go to my standard study, and I'm going to right click on it, and I'll say copy study. When I can do copy, I can give it a new name, and in this case, I'll call it H adaptive. And we're going to use the same uh, symmetry configuration, and uh, the source study is standard. So we'll just hit the green check to this. And if you notice, all the information carries on since from the standard study since we copied the standard study. I've got my fixtures, I've got my the symmetry, symmetry fixtures, I've got my external loads at uh, 11,000 newtons, and uh, it also copies the mesh for me. So um, now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my H adaptive study in my study properties. So I will right click on H adaptive and I'll go to properties. Under properties, like I mentioned, we'll go to the adaptive tab. And over here, instead of none, I want to use the H adaptive. I want to set my target accuracy to be at about 98%. So we don't want to go 100% accurate. 98 is uh, good enough. And then uh, we'll keep the accuracy by sort of somewhere in the middle. We don't we won't really play with this. Um, let's do bump up this uh, maximum number of loops. So if the three loops don't satisfy it, so don't satisfy the uh, the H adaptive uh, um, setting, we can uh, bump it up to the four or the five. So the maximum number you can go over here is five. So we'll just go up to five. And then there's a box for mesh coarsening. And if you check this box, it will apply mesh controls into the higher you know, stress areas and we'll leave the regular areas just, just with a coarser mesh. So it's good to check this box on. So once we have that set up, we'll uh, just click OK. And I'm going to right click on this adap uh, H adaptive uh, study and I'm going to just say run. And you'll see SOLIDWORKS goes through a couple of different loops. So that was the first, that was the second, and that was the third. And as soon as the third one's done, we didn't have to go to the fourth or the fifth loop. Uh, simulation pops up a little window which says analysis has satisfied the current H adaptive accuracy of about 98.0832%. You may increase the target accuracy to rerun. So if you notice, if you click OK to the, uh, that window, the window goes away. And now we have a little different value. So if you notice, the highest stress value I'm getting is about 229 as compared to 213, which I got for the standard uh, no adaptive method. Um, the one other important uh, aspect we can kind of um, uh, bring out of this particular study is the convergence. We all we want to um, uh, 
um, head towards convergence and make sure that we are there's no isolated stress areas that are kind of diverging away uh, from the the stress values. So if I right click on this results folder and if I go to define adaptive convergence graph, and I've got the option of couple, doing a couple of different things. I can do accuracy, von Misi stress. In this case, let's just look at von Misi stress. And if I hit the green check over here, this will produce a graph for me that kind of shows you that the steps that we took, the, the, the stress value is actually eventually converging. So if I had multiple data points, you will see this would be a much smoother curve. But with these ones, um, this gives us a very good idea that we are going the current correct path and uh, our stress values are converging. So. Um, here's our h adaptive convergence graph and we got it by right clicking on the results folder and then just going to h adaptive convergence. So that's our h adaptive convergence and you notice that we just changed some values in the study properties. Now let me show you how the, the p adaptive study works. So I'll go back to my standard study to copy it. So I'll go back to standard over here, I'll right click on it and I'll say copy study. And again, I'll give it a new name in this case. I'll call it P adaptive. We're again using the symmetry um, configuration and I'm running a static study as well. So we'll hit the green check to this and you'll notice all the information is carried from the, stu uh, from the standard study. So you don't have to uh, re-add everything again. Just the way we change the P adaptive condition, uh, the H adaptive conditions, I can go into the study property and apply my p adaptive conditions so i'll select the p adaptive options uh, in this case and you notice uh, our h adaptive is uh, grayed out and our p adaptive is uh, um, uh, is highlighted so we want to stop at we want to look at when the strain energy is uh, the strain energy change is one percent or we can also change this number so let's say i want to change it at 0 0.05 i want to i want to um um, I want a solid work simulation to stop when the total total strain energy change is 0.05% uh, or less. So if it's less than that, it's also going to stop. And update the elements with the relative strain energy error of 2% or more. So we'll keep that at 2%. And again, like I mentioned, we give it a starting polynomial. So we'll start with, let's say, um, a second order. We'll give it a maximum polynomial order of about 5. And we'll have this run um, four loops. Once this study, uh, once you've added these values, we'll click OK, and let's go ahead and run it. So again, this goes through a couple of different loops. That was the first, that was the second, that was the third loop that's about to finish. And again, after the third loop, it was able to find, uh, um, uh, it was able to stop, and uh, it was able to satisfy the condition for our p-adaptive study. We again notice our value has um, gone up a little bit more. We've got 226 instead of the standard, which is uh, 213. And uh, so a little bit of difference over here. Um, again, if I wanted to look at the convergence for P adaptive, I right click on the results folder and I'll go for adaptive convergence. And I can look at the maximum one Mises in this case as well. If I hit the green check, you notice I only have three data points, but it's still on its way to converge. Um, Perfect. So this is our P adaptive convergence graph. We'll uh, cancel out of this. And a couple of things that I want to show you. We can do a comparison of different, uh, you know, studies that we have done. Um, I also wanted to show you when we created the H adaptive study, the mesh that the H adaptive study created. So I can go to the H adaptive study, right click on mesh, and say show mesh. And you notice since we had clicked that mesh coarsening button, all these elements over here are really high are really really big and the elements in the high strain errors uh, areas where there could be more uh, could be isolated stresses the elements in that case uh, in, in those areas are uh, much refined so we will get much more accurate results in this areas as compared to these areas and again we're not interested in these areas so we don't really worry about them as much we are interested in you know where the breaks can happen so that's your P adaptive. Uh, so that's your H adaptive uh, con um, mesh um, that it that it formed automatically. For the P adaptive, if I show you the mesh, it's not as um, uh, you, you see. Not many mesh controls have been applied. This is just like a like I mentioned. P adaptive doesn't change the mesh. It increases the polynomial order uh, to find you the more accurate results. 
So like, lastly, let's look at these three different values that we, uh, three different studies that we created. And let's look at the stress values and compare all three. So what I can do is I can go up to the compare results option. And over here, either I can look at just this particular study or I can look at the all studies in this configuration. Let's look at that. And over here, I've got my standard study, my H adaptive and my P adaptive. And I want to compare the stress values from standard H and P. So I'll check all those three options and I'll hit the green check. And SOLIDWORKS goes into this uh, split screen mode where I'm looking at the um, um, I'm looking at the von Mises stress for my uh, standard and it shows me it's about at 213. Then I'm looking at uh, the von Mises stress on my H adaptive and it's telling me it's around 229. And then uh, the one in P adaptive, it's telling me it's about 226. So you'll see there's a difference between the two, uh, between the three. And, um, but SOLIDWORKS is automatically finding me a more accurate result value and I don't have to do much except for just start setting my H&P adaptive studies. So over here, I can also take a screenshot and uh, compare the results, send it to um, whoever needs to uh, view these results and stuff. So I'll exit this compare and, uh, and uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, thank you for watching.